Hey everyone, in this week's tutorial, I'm going to be doing a comparison of simulated robotics to real life robotics and show you how to do line following in the virtual robotics toolkit software. So for this week's lesson, I have opened the maze environment yet again, and I'm going to be using line followers as a comparison between programming with a real life physical robot to programming with a virtual robot in the VRT by Cognition. Now the first thing I want to talk about is port view which is essential for a lot of your programs. The port view in the Cognition software works just as it would with a physical robot. You can drive your robot around over various surfaces and it will return a reflected light intensity between 0 and 100 percent and this is very useful for programming and it's used all the time in physical robots so it's nice that they included this in this virtual world and they'll also give you motor encoder values so if we come up here we can see the number of degrees on motor B now one difference between the two is that the lighting conditions within the virtual realm are more perfect than those in real life and what I mean by that is if we come over to the reflected light intensity again if we go over to this black line it's going to return a percentage of zero. That's the, that means zero percent of the light is being reflected by the black line. And this is more perfect, for lack of a better word, than in real life. Because in real life, if your color sensor is hovering over a black line, you're probably going to be getting about five percent reflected light intensity. Conversely, if you move over to the white, which is decidedly not very white, this is more of a wood texture, but it's going to return a 95% reflected light intensity. And this is much higher than what you would normally see with a real-life robot. The reason being, uh, nothing's ever a perfect reflector of light, and additionally, your color sensor is usually a certain distance above the ground. So some of that light is going to escape before it reaches the color sensor. So very rarely in a real life robot are you going to see reflected light intensities as high as you would in the virtual world. However, if you were to calibrate your sensors on your physical robot, you could see light values like this. If you were to calibrate your black line as zero and this wood paneling as 95%, then you could get light values like this. But that's just a small difference that I wanted to point out. Another difference between programming a virtual robot and programming a physical robot is that the virtual robot allows this real-time data menu and this is similar to port view but the reason why this is different is because this gives you full floating point precision over pretty much every single data point you would ever need to know like the motors current run states the their target speed and RPM the degrees remaining and of course everything is given to six decimal places and that's what I mean by full floating point precision. Now port view doesn't give you nearly this much information or anywhere near this type of accuracy and that's one difference between the physical robots and the virtual robots is that with a physical robot you won't get this much information this accurate because it's impossible to know all of this information with this amount of precision in the real world. So those are just two differences that you see already. Now if we're going to go back to another similarity, we're going to look at this EV3 screen here. The EV3 navigation menu is just as it would be on a physical robot. They've pretty much copied exactly. Um, from the port view which I showed before, they have motor control. All of the features on the virtual EV3 are retained from the physical EV3. So that's a similarity between programming the two. Now I've pulled up the Mindstorms EV3 programming environment and everything else that we're going to be talking about when we're comparing the virtual and the physical robots in terms of the programming is going to be the same. So you're going to use the same exact programming environment, the Mindstorms EV3 or Mindstorms NXT to program your robot. You can run the same exact program that you would on a physical robot or a virtual robot. You don't have to change anything in the program except maybe if for example you're using a line follower you might want to change the target values for the light which is something I discussed before but the program on the whole is going to be exactly the same so same programming environment same program itself same procedures for making the program and you're also going to download the program to the virtual robot the same exact way you would for a physical robot uh, this time you're going to be using a Wi-Fi connection but after you've connected to the robot you could just click download and your program is then going to be on your robot in the virtual software so if we come over here 
we'll see it comes up in the same directory tree and you can scroll down and you can find the same program and then you can run it and it will behave just the same way as it would on a physical robot now I'm sure at this point I sound like a broken record I keep saying the same a lot but that's in my opinion the beauty of this program that they've made here is they've done a really excellent job of replicating the experience of using an EV3 to the point where everything except for a few minute details is really just the same so what you get with the software is a really excellent analog for using the EV3 to the point where you could completely replace an EV3 and you'd still be able to use all of its features and get all of the experience of using an EV3 without actually using an EV3 and that in my opinion is just excellent so that's the comparison between the physical robots programming and the programming on the virtual robot the virtual robotics toolkit or VRT is a computer simulation software made by a company called Cognation Robotics that allows you to build and program your very own robot and go through all of the steps of prototyping a robot without ever needing a physical one. If you would like to learn more about this software, please click the link and go to my website and I'll have a full written description of the software and a link on where you could purchase the software as well as get a discount. Thanks for watching my tutorial this week. If you found it helpful, be sure to subscribe for more tutorials like this every week. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, be sure to submit it in the comments section below. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Bye.